hello. It is the most wonderful time of the year. And that means I'm gonna watch a Christmas movie every day from now until Christmas. I started yesterday. It didn't go well. So I accidentally watched one of the worst Christmas movies I have ever seen. I had intended to watch The Night Before, the one with Joseph Gordon-Levitt and him and his couple of buddies get really messed up and do immoral things on Christmas Eve as they do their whole entire lives apparently. Love that movie. It's just wholesome and lovely. It's not, but I really, really like it. So I accidentally ended up watching The Night Before Christmas. K-N-I-G-H-T, because I got the titles mixed up. Um, so it stars Vanessa Hudgens, AKA Gabriela Montez from High School Musical, and some guy who looks like a knockoff Robert Pattinson, British accent and all. It was divine. I managed to watch most of it, except the end, because I just couldn't bear it any longer. I, I, I. So then I started reading some reviews online and people are giving it great reviews, saying it's a great Netflix quality Christmas movie and stuff like it's a great movie with bad editing. And I was like, did they just watch what I watched? Or is this the standard for Christmas movies, good or bad? So then last night I was still super distraught about what was going on here. And the fact that I'd spent an hour and 40 minutes of my life watching this. And then naturally I realized I absolutely have to spend an hour and a half every single day for the rest of December watching a crappy Christmas movie in a search to find the worst Christmas movie ever. I'm thinking we'll call this Christmas movies roasting on an open fire. Get it? So yeah, I'm gonna watch a bad Christmas movie every day and then on occasion I'm gonna come onto the internet and rage about it and it's gonna be a great time and you can watch it if you want. So here we are, pop some popcorn, get some hot chocolate, join me for a recap of the night before Christmas. So we're in medieval England and the guy who plays Sir Cole, the knockoff Robert Pattinson guy, I don't really know what was going on at this point because I will be honest, I was painting my nails and I couldn't fully understand their accents, but he wants to get knighted and he has to get knighted before December 25th for some reason. There is a reason, but again, I really wasn't paying that much attention to it. So he ends up in this forest and comes across this lady who I thought she was called the old crow the whole time. Apparently she's the old crone. And she basically says all these riddles to him and asks him if he could do something before December 25th and that would make him become knighted. Again, really wasn't paying that much attention to it. So take what I say with a grain of salt. So she gives him a glowy necklace and he ends up in Ohio in 2019 at a Christmas festival. And then we go to Gabriela Montez, who is now a high school teacher, apparently. So if you grew up with high school musical like me, this means that you're old now because now the high school student is playing a teacher. And I have friends who are teachers, so I don't know why I find this so alarming, but I do. I actually don't know what her name was. It was like Brooke or something. I honestly don't know what her name was. So there's this opening scene where she's in her classroom and she goes up to one of her students and she's like, your grades really could be better than this. Like, I know you can, do like one of those scenes, you know the ones I'm talking about. And then she gives them like, it's this whole life lesson uplifting thing about how the girl didn't do good on her exam or report or whatever because some guy hurt her feelings and then Vanessa Hudgens is like, well, you know, we all grow up fantasizing about princes coming to save us and we're going to be princesses, but sometimes they turn out to be frogs. She's super jaded is basically the point of this scene, I think. I guess she didn't end up with Troy Bolton after all. So they have like this big heart to heart and they hug and then the part of me that's living in the COVID pandemic was like, don't hug, you can't do that. But then I was like, no, it was 2019, they were safe, they didn't know what was coming. Anyways, so then Gabriella Montez gets a phone call from her sister saying that she has to stay and work extra hours because she has no extra employees, but she promised her daughter that she would take her to this play or this Christmas festival or something. And so Vanessa Hudgens is like, yeah, I'll totally take her, no problem. I don't know why this lady has no employees at a boutique shop in Christmas season. Like, I'm pretty sure this is happening all on December 19th, but what do I know about running a business? Gabriela Montez and her niece are at the Christmas festival, the same one that Sir Cole is at. 
and they're standing in line to meet Santa Claus. Gabriella Montez sees her ex. It comes out that she cheated on her, that he cheated on her. It wasn't Troy Bolton, it was someone else. And then Claire goes and sits on Santa's lap and asks if for Christmas her aunt could have a guy who won't cheat on her, which was super touching. And then she goes with her niece to get hot chocolate, runs into the night and spills the hot chocolate all over his armor. So he's been like shouting at people in Old English and then he goes and calls Mrs. Claus old crone which like cause they kind of look alike and she's been lurking or something. There's a whole thing where she kind of like lurks the whole time. Um, anyways, everyone is pretty put off by his antics at this festival, except Gabriella Montez, whose loins just instantly quiver when she spills all this hot chocolate on him. She's like rubbing him slowly with her napkin on and she's like, oh, your armor feels so authentic. It's gross, it's so bad. And then she quite literally chews her bottom lip in basically every scene where she looks at him from here on out. Again, this is like a Robert Pattinson knockoff, so already the bar is not super high. I don't really know why she's so obsessed with this dude, but this is only the beginning, let me tell ya. So then Gabriella Montez is driving home through a snowstorm because it's suddenly like torrential, terrible, snowy, awful weather. She can't see and she hits circle with her car. Um, because he's standing in the middle of the road. I think he was lost or something. The editing and acting in this car scene is despicable. Are you okay? And it actually makes me think, I feel like I did this scene better in my Twilight parody when I used like half footage from the trailer and half of my red Ford Escort and my mom's minivan to recreate this scene for the trailer. I'll show you guys. You can decide which one you think is better because I certainly know what I think is higher quality, but I'm a little biased. Then this policeman shows up at the scene. They kind of babble for a little bit and he's like, why is this dude dressed as a knight? And she's like, oh, I think he's like an actor or something or thinks he's a knight. Like everyone has an excuse for this behavior. And in my opinion, it's very alarming and he needs help. So they do go to the hospital where he ends up discharged. I don't even remember if they said he had a concussion or not, but they're like, yeah, you can go. And the policeman is like, this guy literally thinks he's a knight and you have to address him as Sir Cole. And Gabriella Montez is like, oh, I'll do anything for Sir Cole. <laughs> so the, the police, the policeman, I can't remember if he said like he needs a place to stay or what, but she basically goes, he should probably stay at my guest house. <laughs> and the policeman is basically like, I think you're a little bit crazy. And this is not because she's under the delusion that she as a senior high school teacher who lives alone can afford a house with a guest house. It's because he's like, no. This guy is crazy and he's not right. Like something's going on here. But he's discharged from the hospital and goes home with Gabriella Montez. And there's all these scenes throughout this where he's like finding out this new technology. Like he's surprisingly calm for someone who just came from a medieval place and is just going about life. Like he's he's not alarmed that he's sitting in like a, a hunk of steel that's moving. He just gets really riled up when the music plays. And then he sees like an Alexa, nice little product placement, got the, uh, whatever they're called, the Hey Alexa things. He gets really upset by that. He calls the TV the, um, the magical box of merriment, I think is what he calls it. Like that's the stuff that fascinates him. Oh, in the fridge. But other than that, he's like, well, everything's business as usual. It just seems a little bit, I think they really could have turned that up, you know? So it turns out that she like inherited this house from her parents because they died. So that's just a side note. I still find it all a little bit questionable. And then her sister calls and tries to talk her out of letting this random dude stay in her guest house. But Vanessa Hudgens is like, um, Mads, I'm a high school teacher. I know a bad apple when I see one. So then Sir Cole stays up all night watching TV because he loves the magical box of merriment. 
And then honestly, there's just like a lot of repetitive, boring crap, like all this stuff with the technology. And then her sister comes over to meet the knight and she is just all over him. Like you can hear the thunk of their pants dropping when they meet him. It's absolutely crazy. Like again, this is a Robert Pattinson knockoff. He is not that attractive, nor is he that charming. Like what they should be thinking is that he's a psychopath. Like there's something wrong or he needs help. Maybe not a psychopath. Like that's not the right word, but that he probably needs some help. Her sister brings these muffins for him and these outfits. She's like two bags from her boutique, I guess probably because she has so much money because she has no employees. Yeah, she's all over this guy. She's like, wow, he is so dreamy and perfect. And then Gabriella Montez and Sir Cole go by a Christmas tree. The knight ends up teaching the niece how to sword fight. So the niece and the sister come over to help decorate the tree with Sir Cole and um, Gabriella Montez. And Claire's like asking him, can girls be knights? And he's about to say no, because he's from medieval England. And Vanessa Hudgens jumps in and she's like, yes! Girls can be anything they want, which 100% is true, absolutely. But in my brain, I'm like, TBH, I'd rather leave the sword fighting to the men, but that's just me. I'm also just a house girlfriend right now. But if you wanna go sword fight, go sword fight, like do what you do what you need to do. I just personally think I would rather bake some bread, which actually comes up in a minute, so stay tuned. And this part, it's at this point in the movie where they just trimmed the tree and the knight goes sword fighting with the niece outside. Gabriella Montez and her sister are standing in a pile of their own drool while they watch this guy teach the niece how to sword fight. And then the sister's like, apart from the fact that he thinks he's a 14th century knight, I think he's the, the, the total package. And Gabriella Montez is like, you know, I think he might be right. Like, who are we to say that his reality isn't what it is? Like, just because we don't understand something doesn't mean it's not real. And I'm like, she is right indeed because he is from medieval times, but like, I'm also wondering why the sister thinks this guy is the whole package. He doesn't have a job. If he's anything like the real medieval knights, he probably stinks because they didn't even bath like once a week. People actually thought it was gross to bath back then, apparently. I've been watching a lot of like little history videos on YouTube and like people in those times were not a huge fan of bathing. They didn't brush their teeth. Like this is not an accurate representation of a 14th century knight, just as a side note. But this whole scene also gave me a really good idea for a psychological thriller. I'm thinking like this whole movie stays the same, except then he ends up brainwashing Gabriella Montez into thinking that he is indeed a medieval knight and like creates this alternate reality. And basically in my head, it sounds a lot better than what I'm actually saying, but it could be a really good psychological thriller. So if anyone wants to buy that idea off of me, they should definitely do it because I think it could be a real big hit. So anyways, back to the whole bread thing. Gabriella Montez puts a Christmas Eve dinner on every year in honor of her parents because they used to do the same thing. They would invite people who didn't have a place to go for Christmas to, I can't remember if it was their home or if they actually started this whole like town hall thing, but she continues the tradition by holding a Christmas Eve dinner at the town hall every year. So they're at the store and the medieval knight starts eating buns out of the bag and like spitting them out and again i'm like what is the appeal of this guy like i don't understand why gabriella montez is all over him like he has zero manners again no job and no driver's license i don't know why she's so obsessed with this loser but he starts eating the bread and spitting it back into the bread bags and she gets all mad at him and he's like i can make way better bread than this and she's like of course you can so shocking they go home and make bread together and then there's this scene which one critic of this movie wrote what was the thing that they said it was like the pottery scene from ghost now i've never seen ghost full disclosure but i was offended and i'd be willing to bet that patrick swayze was rolling over in his grave if he heard a comment like that after watching this scene this was no ghost pottery scene this was an iconic they're making bread and she's just staring at him with her big deer eyes like <laughs> I'm so glad I have an unemployed boyfriend who makes bread. 
It's so bad. The the knight puts a bean in one of the loaves of bread and he's like, whoever gets this in their piece of bread and it gets to make a Christmas wish or something along those lines. That's important because it does come up later. You'll see. They almost kiss and then the phone rings and this happens several times because this is essentially a glorified Hallmark movie. But it turns out Claire, the niece, and her friend are missing. So here's where there's like a very big plot hole in my opinion. I think they're called a plot hole. I don't know, you know when there's like errors in movies and one of them's called a plot hole? Or maybe it's a character issue. Either way, I'll get to that. So they find Claire and her friend on a lake, like a, 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 a lake with thin ice that's cracking and Claire is stuck in the middle of the lake. So the medieval knight who comes from England knows exactly how to save someone from thin ice. Here's what I don't quite understand about that. I have it on good authority because I do have a friend in England who has said that it very rarely snows there, one. So how they would know to save someone from a lake and thin ice is a little questionable. Like I, I get the impression it doesn't snow enough for stuff to really like freeze that thick or at all. So I highly doubt that he would have the knowledge of how to save someone from a, like a, a, a thin ice lake, uh, especially considering like, you know, they don't even know how to drive cars in snow there these days. And again, this is not a roast on England. I just, this is what I've been told by an English person. So then they have this Christmas feast and Vanessa Hudgens gives a 30 second speech which garnered much more applause than I thought it was uh, worthy of in my opinion. There's this whole scene with like them giving presents to poor people and whatever, the usual Christmas movie crap. And then there's been this recurring neighbor who shows up and tries to like swoop in on the Robert Pattinson knockoff and she shows up at this Christmas Eve feast which I'm pretty sure she just came to, to like seek out Robert Pattinson because this feast is for people who don't have a, a like who don't spend Christmas with anyone. I have a feeling that there's not two single women living side by side in these giant mansions with guest houses. I'm quite certain that this girl literally just hauled her goodies down to the town hall to pick up this this night guy. And she brings this mistletoe with her and bless her heart, she goes over to him and she's like, Do you know about mistletoe? And He's like, no, and then she tells him how mistletoe works. And then he just stares across the room at Gabriella Montez. And then this girl, who again, hauled her cookies down to the town hall to pick this guy up, sees him looking at her and goes, you know what, have this mistletoe and use it on someone who you care about. Because I know that person isn't me. And then she leaves. That's that's your fight. Like you're not gonna really give her a good try. I just think that everyone's way too nice in these movies, and it's a little bit sus, you know. Uh, so then he goes over to Gabriella Montez, puts the mistletoe over top of her, and is like, "You know what that means?" And she's like, "Oh, <laughs> it's just a silly tradition. I'm sure we're fine." And then he looks all hurt and sad, and then she's like, "But it wouldn't hurt to make sure." I'm like. Don't act like you haven't been wanting this to happen the whole movie. Like, you have been biting your lower lip since the Christmas festival. I'm surprised she even had a lip to kiss this guy with, to be perfectly honest with you. So, it turns out he fulfilled the night duty because um, the necklace starts glowing, so his time in 2019 Ohio is done. The, the task had something to do with, like, it wasn't falling in love, but you could tell it was along the lines, like, feeling so much kindness and happiness or like showing that you care so much about like it was something some crap like that anyways this is where I really stopped paying attention because I was like okay he's going back to the medieval times guaranteed he's gonna end up back there anyway so whatever but basically he goes back he gets knighted I think again could be wrong on that one um and then Vanessa Hudgens is just sobbing because he left her and chose being a knight over their love even though she said to her students, like, dudes ain't S-H-I-T, so follow your own goals. But then when this guy does it, she's like, nah, I mean, I get it. She's sad, I would be too. Not over him, trust me. Uh, she runs into her student. This happens throughout the movie as well. The student's always just showing up in random places. This same student that she had the heart to heart with at the beginning of the movie. 
and she was like, I was so wrong. Love does exist, but also do still follow your goals because that's important too because the student's all proud. She's like, yeah, that guy tried to get back together with me and I was like, mm, no. And then Vanessa Hudgens is just like standing there sobbing and like has this whole speech and the student's just staring at her. Because what else do you do when you find your high school teacher sobbing on the side of the road on Christmas Eve? She's all dolled up to the nines looking like a snack and sobbing, sobbing hysterically. So then she goes home and sobs and she eats some of the leftovers from the Christmas Eve dinner. And as she's eating a piece of bread, she gets the bread with the bean in it, which means she makes a Christmas wish. And guess what she wishes for? She wishes that the night was there, shocking. And then again, I wasn't paying attention, but somehow the night did indeed end up back in Ohio. I think it was on Christmas day. I guess because of the, the wish she made on the bean. Maybe that, that stuff's legit, I don't know. And then there is a post credit scene where the, uh, the crone lady shows up in medieval England with a different knight and is about to basically do the same thing to him as he, she did to Sir Cole. I just, I, I pray to the Lord that that doesn't mean there's a sequel coming because that was a lot. That was a lot of nonsense and garbage. So my final thoughts on the film, I thought it was lazy. I thought it was poorly written. I think with good writers, it could have actually been decent, like like an enchanted, but Christmas themed enchanted, because that movie is pretty funny. Like, I think that one's very clever. Um, there was one funny scene, which I'll give to Sir Cole. They go to a diner because he's hungry, and so she's like, yeah, I'll take you to get a burger. And he loves all this stuff that she ordered, so he eats it all, and then he screams at the waitress, another round, wench! And I did almost laugh out loud. The, the scene was pretty good and the restaurant was like, what? And Gabriella Montez, I mean, she's a terrible actress, but she was like, can't say that, it's not okay. I did like it though, that was funny. Um, so I do have doubts that this is the worst Christmas movie, but my chest did hurt a little bit just from like the secondhand embarrassment and cringe of watching it. I think Gabriella Montez maybe should have stuck to musical theater, but that's just me. And I think they could have splurged and got Robert Pattinson for real to come and be the knight so that like his appeal would be a bit more there because it was just not doing it for me. And I couldn't understand why all of these women were like, <laughs> Sir Cole, make me bread. Put your arms around me and make me bread. All of this would have made a bit more sense basically. Um, but even that would have been generous in my opinion. Anyways, that is it for this recap of the what is it called again? The Night Before Christmas. And I'm gonna try to watch four Christmases today. It's on one of the best Christmas movies lists and on one of the worst Christmas movies lists. So I'm not sure what I'm getting myself into, but I definitely had to get away from like the real pure corn. So wish me luck with that. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.